Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you back into the studio for another record. This year as we discuss, break down, and recap the day of baseball. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The Yankees and the Guardians played one of the most uh, enjoyable games that I've had the chance to watch as a baseball fan. Let's break it down. We're going to break down the sixth inning, the ninth inning, and the incredible tenth inning. Uh, this series had so many moments. Baseball in this postseason has been incredible. And we're going to see what happens tonight to see potentially Yankees-Mets or Yankees-Dodgers. Exactly what baseball needed. So let's get straight into it. I thought this was a perfect... I, I don't know why. I'm just like a baseball uh, like like nerd. And I just like love that this this the artistic, beautiful, be the beautifulness of baseball. That was what the word I was looking for. It's just such an artistic sport. So Glaber Torres against Tanner Bobby. Third time through the lineup, <clears throat> and, and Glaber Torres is going to uh, attack first pitch. Once again, Glaber Torres setting the tone for the Yankees at the top of the lineup. He led this game off with a single. Of course, got gunned out at home plate, but Glaber Torres, I see you on a bad, uh, not a, uh, a bad pitch at all by, by Tanner Bobby, a load away cutter. And, and Glaber Torres extends his bat out, gets it off the end and leads this sixth inning off with a single. So Juan Soto now is also going to be first pitch attacking, and he is going to line a single up the middle as well. That hit off the pitchers now. Really good effort by Brian Rocchio at shortstop, but the Yankees put together a bit of a rally. To this point, man, Tanner Bobby's been pitching really, really well. Again, 60 pitches to this point, uh, and he's really shut down the Yankees. Not about of that first inning where the Yankees put together a bit of a rally, hit two batters, Aaron Judge and Jazz Chisholm Jr., but uh, he, he's been really, really, really good. But Soto right through the legs of Bobby. Really good effort. Uh, Roki almost got to that ball. So now we're going to see the pitching coach and Steven Vogt come out here. Tanner Bobby, they, they might have saw something. Uh, we got Kate Smith warming up in the bullpen. But biggest situation that Bobby's been in here. Again, third time through the lineup. Aaron Judge now coming up to the plate with no outs. Really, really massive at that right here. So Bobby, first pitch is going to go to a sinker. Misses low in the strike zone. 1-0. Comes back to another sinker. Low in the strike zone, catches the bottom part. Aaron Judge typically is, is not seeing two fastballs, first two pitches of the at-bat. So maybe catching him off guard, Judge be more patient in a big situation. So now we're 1-1. One, one. Will Bobby go back to another fastball? He will. He's trying to go upstairs with it this time. Misses it inside. So 2-1, three fastballs. I go to a change up outside, and Aaron Judge is going to roll over Rokio to second. And there's a double play turned by the Cleveland Guardians. Really, really deflating for the New York Yankees. Rokio, I mean a routine double play. Perfect double play ball. Uh, a good pitch by Bobby and Judge. I mean, Judge hit it hard, but it was right at Rokio. And he did he did, he did, did get it off the end of the bat. A, a really good turn, man. Rokio and Jimenez. Of course, we're going to talk about the, the double play that they uh, weren't unable to turn. Or just, just getting the out at second base that they couldn't get later in this in this game. But... Uh, a really, really great defensive duo in the, in the middle of the field. Tanner Bobby excited. Massive moment here. If Bobby gets through this sixth inning, even if they take him out, six strong innings of no-run ball in a do-or-die game for your team. Massive here. So now we have John Carlos Stan, the only guy in our way. Runner at third base, first pitch slider, Stan chasing outside the strike zone, trying to be aggressive. Not even close right there. If I'm Bobby, go right back to a pitch that's outside of the strike zone. Bo Naylor wants that pitch low. Tap, 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 tap the, the ground right there. And, and another good pitch outside the strike zone. Slider change up two good off-speed pitches from Tanner Bobby. 0-2. We're not going anywhere else but another slider. Same location as before. But finally, Sam, he, you can tell he was still like, hey, I, I'm still like not offering at it. But like you can tell like he saw that he was, let me, let me hold my swing and, and, and try to uh, stay patient here. Two strikes. Bo Naylor again, tap home plate. We want this pitch low. Do not leave this pitch middle. Goes to a curveball. Now G's taking these pitches and back in this at-bat suddenly. 2-2. Two, two. Bybee, he's going to go to a changeup. He's going to miss it up and inside. And suddenly, full count here for Giancarlo Stanton. 3-2. Tanner Bybee is going to leave a middle, middle slider. Giancarlo, no si en un pueblo. He just tied this ball game up. His fifth home run of the postseason. Big G. Man, my voice is shot from that. I was so excited this entire game. Giancarlo, 4 to 50 feet. Uh, I, mean, I mean, a really bad pitch right there by Bobby. That was the, I mean, that was his worst pitch of the night, man. I, I mean, again, he, he really pitched a good game, Tanner Bobby. Uh, again, a do-or-die game. Uh, but left a middle, middle slider, two strikes. 
uh, needed one more pitch to get out of that, and Stan made him made him pay, man. Stan is so so locked in. He won the ALCS MVP, um, and, and it's really been an incredible postseason to watch from Giancarlo Stan. So it ties this ball game up. We take this game now to the top of the ninth inning. It's still tied two two. Both bullpens. Really, really good. We talked about it in the recap yesterday, the reaction video at like 12 o'clock at night. But um, uh, Jake Cousins, impressive. Mark Leiter Jr. was impressive. Uh, on the other side, Tim Heron was really good for the uh, Guardians bullpen. Now we get to Emmanuel Classe to pitch this top of the ninth inning against Judge, Stanton, and Jazz Chisholm Jr. We saw this matchup, of course, in game number, what was it? Uh, game three, where Aaron Judge went yard against Emmanuel Classe. And first pitch, he's going to pound in a 99 mile hour cutter. The last home run that Judge hit, he saw lots of pitches outside. First pitch is going to be inside and catches the inside part of the play. Now we go to a slider. I mean, Emmanuel Classe is really so good. Of course, he struggled this postseason, man. A judge hit that home run, 99 mile hour cutter. That is a perfectly uh, tunneled slider off of that cutter. So if Judge was like, I'm looking outer half, and, and he gets that same cutter. Like, it, I, I mean, that's a really good take by Judge right there, but that's a, that's such a good idea and, and, and execution from Emmanuel Classe. So now 1-1, we go back inside with 100. That catches the lower inner half of the strike zone. So now 1-2 to Judge. He's going to give him a middle-middle cutter. Judge just missed this, man. When I was watching, I was like, oh, my goodness. I thought that ball, honestly, I didn't think it really had a chance, but I was like, oh, it's Aaron Judge. It's Aaron Judge, but he got that off, back, that off the end of that. He's a little out in front of that cutter, but not not a great location from Emmanuel Class. Hey, hey, gets the first out of the inning. Now we got Big G up, and of course he hit a home run off of Emmanuel Class A as well in that game. That was a middle middle slider. But if you remember in that at bat, he was really beating him with the cutters. G was just fouling the pitches off. Um, so and then he eventually gave him with a slider, and of course left in middle, and G did not miss it. So first two pitches gonna be cutters. He's going to try to go low. That's a good frame job by Bo Naylor right there. It kind of looked <laughs> – that, that looked very weird in the glove. Yeah, it's just because of the glove colors. It, it, it looked very uh, off right there. So 2-1, we're going to see another cutter up and inside. It's going to be GG again. It's been late, late, late on the cutter. It's my best pitch. I'm going to continue to go to it. 101, top of the zone. I'm executing that pitch. I mean, I mean this is really Emmanuel Classe dialed in and just locating. Emmanuel Classe, a little stare down of Giancarlo Stan. That's such an incredible pitch right there. And it really went out. When you see him release the baseball, of course, you kind of throw a cutter. You hold it like that, and then you kind of throw it like that. At least guys that really want to get movement uh, on that cutter. But, I mean, really, I mean, he, of course, he's a little bit off to the side of it, but it's really not that much. And you can see the movement. That movement, like, it's, a, it's like a frisbee. So, and you can see, yeah, you can see that spin. It's it spins, spins. And like, I mean, that is such a good pitch. Manuel Class is one of the best pitchers that we'll see. And Sandy, yeah, of course, is going to be late on that. So, I got Jazz Chisholm coming to the plate with two away here in the ninth inning. First pitch, he is all over the cutter, but he is not going to be on that because that pitch is above the strike zone. Oh one, one Class A goes back to another one. And Jazz, again, he's, he's sitting a fully cutter right there, and he's able to get to it. John Kenzie kind of has a little trouble getting to it, but a base runner with two away for the New York Yankees, also with speed. Potentially, Jazz Chisholm could steal right here. So as Waldo Cabrera pinch ran for Anthony Rizzo, he's going to first pitch, be attacking, and Brian Roque, a very awkward play right there at second base, but he gets that ball as Jazz Chisholm. Was he? No, I don't know if he was. Was he stealing right there? I think he was stealing right there. I'm almost sure. I, I don't even remember. Uh, I think he was. He, yeah, he Yes, he had, yeah, he was definitely stealing. He was definitely stealing first pitch right there. But Rokio gets that ball in perfect position to just move his foot over. Really close play still, as we're going to see the replay. Also, Jazz Chisholm kind of holding on the bag. Uh, looked very awkward from his perspective. But uh, Emmanuel Classe is able to get out of the ninth inning unscathed. And yet we can see he just got him by a half a step. And Emmanuel Classe is going to force this game to the ninth inning, where Luke Weaver... Um, shuts it down for the Yankees. So sends it to the top of the 10th inning. This ball game is tied up, ladies and gentlemen. Hunter Gaddis now coming in for the top of the 10th inning. This is where the, the moment starts, man. I don't wanna... Okay, my voice is actually... I, I His voice is terrible right now. I was, I was about to say feel this moment by Pitbull. Uh, so Hunter Gaddis, first two pitches. Volpe is going to be change up slider, catches the outside part of the play. Volpe's put up such good at-bats, and that is going to continue, but... Just got it off the end of that right there. So, first out for Hunter Gaddis, uh, one of the best bullpen arms in baseball, really. I was just checking because 
Hunter Gaddis has got three elite pitches in that slider, in that fastball. Uh, also in that, 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 I mean, his sliders is his main three pitches, but he also, I, I think, incorporates a cutter. Um, I'm pretty sure, and I, I'm not sure if I've seen a curveball, but he might have it in the in the in the bag. But Hunter Gaddis was a starter throughout his entire career, but this year, really full time, moved to a bullpen, and we've seen what he's done uh, as a as a reliever. So first pitch, Austin Wells, way out in front of the change. I'm gonna go back to that because that really was was the biggest thing in this at bat. We talked about it in the the recap uh, yesterday. Austin Wells was not on the change. He was not on any pitches in this at bat. So 0-1, Hunter Gaddis. He's going to go to a fastball. Wells is able to take that pitch just above the strike zone. Now we go back to a changeup. These are not great locations for a changeup. If Wells stays back at it, he could shoot that ball to left field. But, uh, yeah, he's not He's not on time with that change. He's not on time really with any of his pitches. Hunter Gaddis, once who's going to opt to go back to another fastball. From that reaction, again, I'm not 100% sure. But for me, I mean, Wells, you could, I, I, I think he's late. I think he's late on that fastball, at least from just my reaction. I, again, I, like, you can see, like, right here, he's like, oh, I'm about to swing, and the ball is almost in his mitt. I think he's late on that fastball, so he's kind of in that in-between mode. Really, outside of that one home run in game number four, Austin Wells has not looked comfortable at all in this entire playoff run, uh, really, really on any pitches. He's really had a lot of double plays and strikeout looking as well. So, 2-2, two -two, Austin Wells is going to uh, take a, a not a good location for a change of a slider right there. So, 3-2, two, two, now count full. Hunter Gaddis, you got to throw a strike right here, and he's going to miss low. Not a, not even a terrible pitch, uh, but Wells is, is able to stay disciplined, man. He's able to stay disciplined. Again, Gaddis, you've got to throw a strike right there. you got to make Wells hit it. You've got to make Wells hit it, especially now you've got nine and then one. You're forcing it back to the top of the lineup in Glaber Torres, and if Alex Verdugo gets on, you got Juan Soto up. So, Alex Verdugo, first pitch, is going to take that changeup. That changeup is really a screwball. Incredible, incredible pitch. Doogie's going to roll over right there. Andres Jimenez tosses it to Brian Rocchio, and he is not going to catch the baseball. The Yankees suddenly first and second back to the top of the lineup with one away. Brian Rocchio, really good play to get to it from Andres Jimenez, a slow dribbler. And we're going to see him toss it over, and Brian Rocchio... Oh my goodness, did I just, no, I did not just mess it up. Okay, I didn't mess it up. I'm, okay, I, I got to rewind. I, I just clicked something, so it just like jumps ahead real quick. So right here, uh, Rokio, he just, he just missed the baseball, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think there's any deep reason. I, people on the broadcast, they said it was because he was trying to turn it. I, his eyes were locked in. He did not turn, it wasn't one of those plays where you turn your head before you catch the ball. His eyes, you can see right here, right when it's coming, his eyes are locked, man. He's looking at the baseball. He just missed it. He just missed it. I mean, it, it's a quick reaction as a, as a second base. So hypothetically, that, guy, that guy's really close to you and he's tossing. If that ball, you're, you're right here. If that ball is to the, to the right side, that's a tough play as a, as a shortstop slash second baseman. You got to make a reaction, but that was a good toss. That was a good talk. Like that was in a, a place where he didn't have to move it a lot, but uh, it is again. I just it's a it's a quick reaction. That was just of course a play that Rokio, uh, of course, should make. It. And there again, a really really great middle infield. That's a massive 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 error, massive error. And this Guardians fan knows it. So Glaber Torres now back to the top of the lineup. First pitch fastball. Finally, he's been change up change up first pitch on Glaber Torres. Gonna be a little bit late on that, but he goes swing man. Good swing right there. I drive that pitch to right field. That's what Glaber Torres does. 0-1. Gaddis is going to go to a changeup, and that is going to hit off Glaber Torres' bat. That is such a Glaber Torres moment right there. And, of course, Glaber Torres, I love Glaber like, Torres. Torres is one of my favorite players. That is, like, only something Glaber Torres would do. He, like, he just checks swing, barely gets it. That is somehow gets the barrel to it. Now we're down 0-2 right here against Hunter Gaddis. That sucks. We're going to go to another fastball. Glaber Torres just battling here. Bad. That's a battle pitch right there. A battle swing. He's not. He's a. He's dealt, He's a lot more late on that fastball. More in a, a reactionary position where I'm just gonna uh, be a little bit late on that fastball. A little bit early. I'm just trying to just see the ball and just 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 put uh, uh, my bat to it somehow. And, and, and Hunter Gaddis is gonna sense that Glaber Torres might be in that type of mode and, and go to a a slider that's not even close. And Glaber Torres is gonna be called for the check swing swing. We're going to see a, a side view right here. And Glaber Torres, I do think he did go right here. His hands uh, really trying to uh, get, that, get that swing off. Uh, so now we have two outs here. 
first and second, this is the moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna do a whole separate uh, edit for this, uh, so a whole separate video just for this breakdown. Uh, we're gonna I, I just clip out, clip out the video, but Soto versus Hunter Gaddis. The biggest moment of the game right here, and Soto wants it. First pitch, slaughter inside, hop! We take that pitch, baby, we ready. 1-0. Soto's going to see another slider. That's a good pitch right there from Hunter Gaddis. We've seen back-to-back -back sliders. Gaddis mixing it up. He's been change up. He's been having a change up in this inning. Now we go to two sliders, uh, first two pitches to Juan Soto. So now 1-1. One, one. We're going to go to another slider. Juan Soto just missed a middle-middle slider. <sighs> looked honestly on that slider, but just a, a bit above it. Just a bit above it, but looked on time with that slider. Looked very on time. That he's on time with that slider. And, and Soto knows he missed it. But now, one, two, we want this battle, baby. Yup. We love this competitive nature. One, two, Gaddis. We go to a change up Soto. I mean, I saw uh, a clip of actually John Boy, John Boy doing a breakdown. And, and he, he showed, like, Soto, like, right here. Is it, but, like, you just clip out this frame right here. Look at where Soto is in a position, and then he somehow is able to get a swing off on that changeup. Just, I mean, really, really impressed. He was fooled on that changeup right there from Hunter Gaddis. So, sensing that, where is Gaddis going to go right here, one, two? Is he going to go back to a changeup? Is he going to go to a fastball finally? He's going to go back to another changeup. Right there, that pitch more up in the strike zone. And Soto puts a little bit of a better swing on it, but is able to foul that pitch off to the right side. So, stays alive in the at-bat. <sighs> I want this, baby. We drive that pitch. Yeah. 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 I love this competitive nature. One, two. We go to a slider outside. Let's fucking battle. Come on, man. Another slider. It's been slider. It's been slider. It's been slider. It's been slider. Change up, change up, change up. No, change up, change up, slider. We've seen no fastballs. I think this is the seventh or eighth pitch of the at-bat incoming right here. We talk to ourselves. Hunter Gaddis versus Juan Soto. Fastball. 95 upstairs, Juan Soto, that pitch is going to be driven, Lane Thomas going back, looks at the wall, and he is not going to have any room, Juan Soto, three run shot to send the New York Yankees to the World Sweet Series, the biggest swing of Juan Soto's life, that was such a fucking good at bat, man, that was such a fucking good at bat, to be able to re sit right, and we're going to see a side view of this swing, he was totally on time. I've never seen a more on time swing on a fastball. He did not miss it. And that was not a poor location. I thought Hunter Gaddis made great pitches in that bat. Outside of that middle, middle slider. He did not miss with any of his pitches. Juan Soto. Yeah! And then he's just going to get mobbed in the dugout. Some Yankees fans right there. Woo! Come on, man. Juan Soto. Juan motherfucking Soto. I love that. I love this guy. This guy's been on the team. He's been, I, I don't, I, what's his, I think he's the, he's the medical, um, the main medical guy in the Yankees. And look at how he hype is. Yeah! Look, chest bump, baby. Come on. Look how long Tommy is with this fastball. We're going to see, I got a side view of this. Such an impressive swing. Again, you've seen changeup. You've seen changeup. You saw Juan Soto. He was fooled on that changeup, sitting fastball. He's just waiting for that fastball. And he was out. And then he was still able to make that, a millisecond of an adjustment to be able to, hey, I'm going to still foul off that change. I'm going to still foul off that changeup. And, and he was just waiting for this fastball. And he did not miss it. I, I, I mean, Soto's a generational hitter. Absolute generational hitter. Look how on time he is. I mean, let, right, I mean, in the middle, right in the right in the middle. Right in the middle. He did, that, is such a, that is such a good side view, man. That is such a good side. And that is the most flat swing I've ever seen. Bah! So, Luke Weaver coming in here for the bottom of the 10th inning. His second inning of work. Let's close this game down versus the, the top of the lineup for the Cleveland Guardians. The, the first batter, absolute massive. And Luke Weaver is going to be fastball, fastball, and get Stephen Kwan to roll over right there for a routine play. Glaber Torres, first out of the inning. Now we got Kyle Manzarder, first pitch, fastball. And we go to a good changeup, man. Of course, it's the fastball changeup combo. Just smiling. We, we about to go to the motherfucking World Series, baby. Oh, my God. And Hunter Gaddis, man. I, that's tough. I, it really, I really, I, it, 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 it was not, it was not a bad, I mean, it was a bad outing for me. So I, yeah, I just feel bad because I felt like he made pitches. Um, I, I'm not going to feel terrible uh, if I was Hunter Gaddis. I mean, it, it's baseball, man. It's baseball. You just went up against one of the best hitters in baseball, and he did not miss a pitch that, 
uh, you located and you executed uh, to a high level, I thought. So Luke Weaver right there goes to another changeup. Manzardo uh, is able to, to fight that changeup off, a good changeup right there. So now, 0-2, oh, are we going back to another fastball? We will not. We're going to another change of M. Manzardo. Really good at that right there. To get a base run around for the Cleveland Guardians right here. Aaron Boone, J ran my butt right here. We need to be ready for the butt defense. But he is first pitch. Going to be swinging on a cutter. And Aaron Judge going back on it. He is going to make the play on the edge of the warning track. So, Brian Cashman. Absolutely locked in. Lane Thomas, a guy who almost, I didn't, he wouldn't, I would say, but he saved the Guardians in, in game number, uh, what was it, game three? I keep forgetting the game, but yeah, game three, Lane Thomas. Incredible at that versus Luke Weaver. First two pitches, we're going to see cutter, cutter from Luke Weaver. Of course, uh, it was the fastball that Lane Thomas got to uh, in his last at bat. Another cutter right there from Luke Weaver to get to one, two. Now we go fastball. Lane Thomas, after those cutters, Going to be a slight bit under it. And Juan Soto, of course, going to make the play. And the Yankees have advanced to their first World Series since 2009. The Yankees, incredible series, man. Incredible series. The amount of moments that they had, the amount of clutch home runs that they had, uh, incredible pitching performances from the bullpen, uh, from the starting staff. Uh, I mean, I mean, they, they deserve this, man. They, they really deserve this. A great run uh, and an incredible uh, a moment to, to finish off the series and an incredible season so far. Jazz Chisholm Jr. is on the floor, ladies and gentlemen. Austin Wells, Huggin, Aaron Judge. Actually, that might be Jose Trevino. Aaron Judge, Huggin, Juan Soto, and Anthony Rizzo. The 2024 American League champions are the New York Yankees. So appreciate you so much for watching this breakdown. Uh, stay tuned for more content. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend. Leave a like and leave a like and share it with a friend. And, uh, and again, share it with a friend. So appreciate you. Have a great day. I'll see you guys soon.